talking about the boom boom room? Yeah, the boom boom room. That's it. Well, I sure like to see that place and you get it all up and running and pretty looking. My first job was being an extra in a music video. Celine Dion, Love Can Move Mountains. Family Matters, I was an extra in Family Matters in the famous cafeteria fight scene. But, you know, I started with stand-up. That was the key that started the whole engine was stand-up comedy and those extra background roles was just to get some money because I wasn't getting paid as a stand-up as of yet. When I did Life, I had already done Def Comedy Jam a couple of times. I wrote two episodes, well, episode of Martin called Romantic Weekend when they got attacked by this rat. I'd already done a few movies, a sitcom called Good News that I was co-starring in. I had already started touring with the Kings of Comedy at the end of 97 and all of 98. I was really kind of on my way to my destiny. I landed the role in Life by audition. Ted Demi, who was the director, rest in peace, liked what I brought to the table. Eddie Murphy, I'm sure, probably had some hand in that because he had heard about my Night Fat Tuesdays. Miguel Nunez, I'm sure, put in a good word for me, too. He was doing a sitcom called Sparks, Sparks, and Sparks. I was doing a sitcom called Good News, same executive producer, Ed Weinberger. Our stages were right next door to each other. First of all, it's Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. I'm sure Martin put in a good word for me as well because I worked on the show, I'd written an ep episode, we were friends. And then when I read the script, I was like, wow, okay. Let me find my place in this because it's a period piece. That was the deciding factor. It was a different type of role for me. I had never played a period piece that was in that era. I prepared for the role in life by a lot of research. Got with a dialect coach because this is kind of down south a little bit, so I had to get the right voice inflection. I studied the uh, slang of that era. You have to really study that era if you really want to do it justice and play true to it. And once you get all that in your head, you don't even think about it. And when the lines come, you know, you're not acting, you're being. Not knowing that the director was going to let us improv. And that was because of Eddie Murphy. The first day on the set, Eddie Murphy told the director, let them go, let them do whatever they feel is going to make their character and this film work. My experience working with Bernie Mac was just incredible. I got to see Bernie Mac in a totally different way. I mean, the day that Biscuit, Miguel Nunez's character, got shot, Bernie didn't speak to anybody the whole day. Every day, other than that, Bernie would have us dying. Usually when you do a movie and they're setting up for the next shot, people go to the trailers, especially big stars like Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. But Bernie would be holding court telling stories but on the day that he needed to not be funny, he didn't talk to anybody. And I learned from that. Bernie's ad lib was, was sick because on the scene, the cafeteria scene, Bernie had no lines. Bernie just to react to everybody else's line. Bernie was that, that gifted of an artist, not an actor, not a comedian, as an artist. Martin is another genius, but seeing him in this role, being paired up with another great, great, I saw in Martin the confidence that I'm Martin Lawrence, but I also saw in Martin like, wow, this is Eddie Murphy. Eddie was, is so talented and so confident in himself, not cocky, but confident in himself to tell a director, let them improv. That's respect for your castmates, and that's also confidence in what you got. I've been in movies where the, the star is trying to hold everybody back so they can shine. Sissy Tyson was in the movie Life. She played Eddie Murphy's mom. And there's some amazing scenes with her and Eddie Murphy because she came to see Eddie at the camp, at the prison, and he was introducing her to all of us. Her acting with her face without saying words, powerful. I think it, her performance may have been too good, meaning that it was a comedy, but I felt it should have stayed in because it grounded Eddie's character. The cafeteria scene in life is another just genius uh, moment. Eddie Murphy also added, we had to do at least 20 takes, 30 takes of that scene. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree gonna begin up in here on your ass right now. And every take was a different delivery with, with a different set of lines. How long you been in here? What you do? Somebody chopped your sister in here with ass. She was my half sister. So I cut her ass in half. At least I ain't the one who poured my own mom pop. Now, tell that, tell that. That's why when you watch the movie, it's more, it's more of a jump cut, because they took different takes and put it together. 
We done a bunch of takes on that one, too. Show me that grand boy. That scene was supposed to be a serious scene. That was not supposed to be funny. But Bernie Mac, every time we step out there, I'm the papa. I'm the part of that there young and boss. I'm the peppy. <laughs> Coming Out of Life was amazing because it's become such an iconic and cult classic film. People look at you different. Comics respect you. They say, man, you did a movie with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. Why the title, Era of Hip Hop Comedy? I didn't like it at first. I didn't come up with that title. And I had all these other ones. And they explained it to me. And I said, you know what, you're absolutely right. The 90s and when, when Fat Tuesdays was really birthed out of Hip hop. Hip hop was a culture. Hip hop was, we weren't talking about rap. We were talking about the whole culture of hip hop, which was fashion, which was music, which was comedy, which was poetry. Yes, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, who are upset with me, and a lot of them friends that didn't make the documentary, who should have been in the documentary. Yes, I am an executive producer, but I hired a director and story editors to help me tell this story the way they can because that's, this is what they do. What I did was present everybody I wanted, about 200 people, and I've talked to just about everyone I could and got their stories about Fat Tuesdays. But I knew realistically we weren't gonna get to everybody. Those of you who wanna be mad at me and not be my friend anymore, there's more opportunities. I would take that knife out of my back and give it back to you, because I'm still gonna fuck with you, because I believe in your talent, and I'm gonna take my feelings out of it, and not take what you said personally, and look at you professionally. I hope you take from this that comedians are more than just clowns, and punchlines, and court jesters, and assholes, and fools. We're artists, we're doctors, we're healers, 